On the 22nd day of October, Halloween gave to me 22 Rutgers glaring, 21 babies killing, 20 horse heads snorting, 19 D's renting, 18 Franks perving, 17 angels stripping, 16 demons jazzercising, 15 runes on parchment, 14 Joseph's whispering, 13 seniors bleeding, 12 creepy masks, 11 dancing demons, 10 Catholic monsters, 9 priests a miracling, 8 Jerry's vamping, 7 Jody's oinking, 6 body swapping, 5 reeds a wolfing, 4 drunken uncles, 3 werewolf colonies, 2 spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Well, hello there, and welcome to another of the 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for listening to all of these, if you have, or if you picked and, and choose and found yourself here, then uh, thank you for that as well. We really appreciate you listening to Legion Podcast, but enough of the filleting of our listeners. Uh, we're talking about a fantastic movie today. Uh, the Hitcher from 1986, starring C. Thomas Howell and Rutger Hauer. This is a movie that is frustratingly difficult to find on uh, streaming services, and I need to get my own copy of this thing. I, I gotta tell you, one thing that I was really disappointed by was the only way I could watch this, uh, short of ordering it, which I didn't do with enough time, so there you go. Um, <laughs> you have to sign up for... Uh, Max Go was the streaming service that I found this on the Cinemax streaming service and I uh, found it on trial and here's the thing that was even more disturbing about it not only is it only on Max Go that I could find th it's that uh, they shrink down the image so that when you're in you know the proper 16.9 uh, format that it shrinks down the image on your screen and only gets, you know, kind of full screen when it goes to a 4-3 pan and scan situation. I was really disappointed with the transfer of this movie. This movie deserves so much better. And the fact that it has not been treated uh, well by the fine people at Cinemax uh, or, or whomever is distributing the print of this movie. It is not the best print of it in the world. The pan and scan thing is a real disappointment because this is a movie that absolutely deserves a, a widescreen approach. So minor complaint, not minor, complaints uh, aside about the way that the presentation of this movie exists in this modern era uh, that's really frustrating to me. Um, aside from all of that, The Hitcher is still a great movie. It had been a while since I'd seen it. And that's kind of the fun of these lists sometimes is that sometimes I just, you know, like, hey, here's a movie I haven't seen in a long time and I remember really liking it. And so let's give it another day in court. And that's kind of where I landed with The Hitcher was, hey, this is a movie I saw a ton when I was a kid and really enjoyed it. Uh, I always thought Rugger Hauer was very creepy in the movie. And it turns out I was totally right. <laughs> Uh, I, if there is a weakness to this movie, I would argue that it is kind of C. Thomas Howell, even though I think he's fine in it, too. It's just that era of, you know, kind of brat packy, brooding kid. And he's fine. He's totally fine in it. In fact, he has some really good moments, but there are some other times where, you know, he's just being brooding C. Thomas Howell, and maybe I don't like that as much. But it is uh, just a tour de force for Rutger Hauer. And if you've never seen The Hitcher, or seen the original Hitcher, I know there's a remake. I've not seen the remake, to be honest. But in the original H Hitcher, the 1986 film, the whole premise is C. Thomas Howell is just a random dude who is, has signed up for a service where you pick up a car and you drive it to a new destination. And when I worked at a car dealership for a short time, which is the only way that I could successfully work at a car dealership, there, there was a point where we had people who did that. It was usually like retirees and, and that kind of thing. But it like if somebody ordered a car and it wasn't available on our lot, then they would hire somebody through a service. There were companies that did this that just hire a guy to get in a car and drive it to you. And that seems to be sort of what C. Thomas Howell is doing. There's a sort of ride service that he, he's doing. 
And so he finds himself driving late at night and he's fallen asleep and he decides that he's going to pick up a hitchhiker to basically just have somebody to talk to, somebody to help him stay awake. And he just has the misfortune of picking up Rutger Hauer, who right off the bat is just creepy as shit. He's the kind of guy that if you picked him up immediately, you would want him out of your car. And in fact, there's a point where C. Thomas Howell just stops the car and is like, I need you to get out. And Rutger Howard almost does, but then doesn't. And is like, no, 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 I just need you to take me to a gas station because my car uh, ran out of gas. And so after stopping and almost kicking him out, they continue on the way. And then Rutger Howard just reveals, oh yeah, that last guy, uh, that car that we passed back there, um, I killed that guy and I cut him into pieces and that's what I'm going to do to you also. And C. Thomas Howell uses some fairly quick thinking to get himself out of this situation. And that is not the end. However, the, the titular hitcher, Rugger Howard, then follows this guy all over the Southwest, uh, especially in and around this little Texas town where, uh, you know, the, the most of the action takes place uh, to the point where Rugger Howard is like setting up C. Thomas Howell for the crimes that he's committed and police get involved. There's a great scene where he's at this local like podunk jail and C. Thomas Howell has been taken into custody and is waiting for, you know, a lawyer or, or whomever, somebody to show up to help him defend himself. And he wakes up, he ends up passing out for a little bit, wakes up and realizes, oh, my cell door is open and goes out into the police station where we discover that the entire police station and by entire police station, I mean like three or four people are just murdered. And once more, Rugger Hauer has set C. Thomas Owl up to look like a maniac when in fact Rugger Hauer is the maniac in question. And if, if there's any failing of the movie, aside from my minor complaints about C. Thomas Howell in it, I think it's that there aren't as many scenes between Rutger Hauer and C. Thomas Howell just talking to one another as I would like. I'm, there's a handful of them, and it's probably enough. If there were any more, I would probably complain that there were too many. You know, always leave them wanting more. But C. Thomas Howell is constantly struggling with this idea of like, why did you do this to me? Why me? And Rugger Hauer is very cryptic about it. He's like, ah, you'll figure it out. And th so let's talk about Rugger Hauer for a second in this. I love Rugger Hauer in general. I think he's a really good actor. I think he's better than most of the movies that he's been in. Um, you know, whether it's Blade Runner is probably his most celebrated movie, perhaps, but you know, things like Lady Hawk, that Richard Donner movie. I think that's a terrific movie. I think he's really good in it. And it, I mean, perhaps he just got cast as a villain or typecast as a villain. And that's why you don't see him doing bigger stuff. Uh, well, he's not doing anything anymore. R.I.P. Rugger Hauer. But he will always seemed like he was, a, he elevated the material that he, he was performing. And I think that's, more than true in reference to the Hitcher because Rugger Hauer is so intense and creepy and looks amused by everything that's going on. He's just so confident and in control that it's hard to imagine anybody else in this role that would be half as good. Uh, he's just intense and wonderful. And there, there's a great scene where they're at a diner after... A lot of shit has gone down. Like, C. Thomas Howell is, has been run through the ringer by this guy. And Rugger Howard and C. Thomas Howell are, like, across the table from one another. Very much like Heat. I, I wonder if Michael Mann was just like, I'm gonna do <laughs> the seat from The Hitcher. Only instead of Rugger Howard and C. Thomas Howell, it's gonna be Pacino and De Niro. <laughs> but they're across the table from one another. And... At this point, C. Thomas Owl has a gun and pulls it on Rugger Hauer kind of under the table. And Rugger Hauer says, you don't have any bullets. And C. Thomas Howell is like, no, 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 you're just screwing with me. I'm not going to fall for that. And Rugger Hauer says, well, 
your gun isn't loaded, but mine is. And then he basically points a finger gun at C. Thomas Howell under the table. He can't see it, but it's, you know, emulating the motion of I'm drawing a gun on you. And then Rucker Howard slams the top of the table and just goes bang. At which point C. Thomas Howell unloads his gun on C. Thomas Howell. And it turns out, sure enough, the gun isn't loaded. And at the end of the conversation, and during the course of this, I should step back. During the course of this conversation, C. Thomas Howell asks him very pointedly, why are you doing this to me? And Rucker Howard licks a couple of pennies and places them on C. Thomas Howell's eyes and says, you'll figure it out. And then leaves, but not before handing C. Thomas Howell a handkerchief that's got some bullets in it. And this, I think, is the ultimate point of the film. If there is a point. I mean, it's just such a terrific movie. I don't care what the theme of the movie is almost. And I am a theme and subtext guy, but this movie is just so badass that I don't care. Um, But I think the idea, aside from the general uh, notion that, hey, sometimes bad shit just comes into your life and won't let you go. And, you know, there's nothing you can do about that but deal with it. And that's ultimately, like, C. Thomas Howell is constantly running from Rutger Hauer for much of this movie. And at a certain point, he, he stops. Like, the end of the movie is, or the last act of the movie, I should say, is him... Uh, deciding like I can't run from this guy anymore I've got to destroy him I've got us I've got to kill Rugger Hour because the police aren't going to do it and he's going to get away and he's going to keep coming for me and he's going to keep killing Jennifer Jason Lees uh, which is a thing that happens in this movie in fact her death is one of the gnarliest things I think I had ever seen up to that point in film where she is tied between a semi and a semi trailer with Rutger Hauer riding the clutch of this semi and the idea is if the police shoot him his hand is his foot comes off the clutch and it's going to kill Jennifer Jason Lee if C. Thomas Howell does not get in the cab with him he's going to take his foot off the clutch and it's going to kill Jennifer Jason Lee and of course what happens is C. Thomas Howell does get in the truck and because he does not give a satisfying answer to the question of why do you think I'm doing this to you? Why do you think that we are together in this truck right now? He ends up taking his foot off the clutch and killing Jennifer Jason Lee. And then he's finally taken into custody and so forth. But that's the point where C. Thomas L is like, all right, I just got to kill this guy. I don't have any choice. I've got to take him down. And it's, oh, it's so good. And so he ends up uh, kidnapping and kicking out of a police car, poor Jeffrey DeMunn from, you know, Walking Dead and The Mist and all that stuff, big Frank Darabont guy. And uh, Jeffrey DeMunn, who's playing the sheriff, is like, you guys have a weird thing between you and you just need to knock it off. And C. Thomas I was like, I got to finish this. I got to go kill this guy because otherwise this is never going to end. And so thematically, I think that's what the screenwriter and director are getting at in this film, which is at a certain point you have to stop and face your problems that otherwise they will continue to pursue you and destroy your life and the life of uh, those around you. But so yeah, this movie ends with him just showing up after Rutger Hauer has busted himself out of custody and, and takes him down. And there's this wonderful shot at the end of the movie as the credits start to roll of the sun going down behind C. Thomas Howell as he just has a smoke and leans against this car as if to say, holy shit, can you believe all that happened? Uh, it's, oh my God, this movie is so good. The Hitcher, it's brutal. It it's uh, it reminds me a lot of Duel in, in a lot of ways, that uh, Spielberg movie with Dennis Weaver where he's being pursued by the evil semi-truck. It's that kind of thing where Rutger Hauer is just you don't know his real name. He says his name is John Ryder, but he's also a a hitchhiker and that could be a made up name. Uh, It's just a, a nameless John Doe kind of character that could be anybody or anything. And I think that's one of the things that makes the movie really work is that he doesn't have a particular persona. He doesn't have a backstory. He is just a sadist 
who has run across C. Thomas Howell's path. If C. Thomas Howell hadn't stopped for this hitchhiker, none of this would have ever happened. You know, like, he would have gone on killing, uh, so Rugger Howard would have, but it wouldn't have involved C. Thomas Howell at all. You know, he would have delivered his car to, uh, you know, wherever it was going and gone on with his life. And in the randomness of it, the randomness and the anonymity of Rutger Hauer are the things that I think make the movie work so well for me. Because it's true, like, life throws weird shit at you. And Rutger Hauer's the, the embodiment of that. Uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's so good. Uh, it, it has a great look to it. The fact that it's all taking place in the Southwest and the deserts of Texas it just looks so remote and forlorn and the cast isn't very big uh, even though there are you know people in diners and at the police station and that kind of thing but there is a scene where Rugger Howard shoots a fucking helicopter out of the sky and if that ain't a good movie people I don't know what is The Hitcher rules it is such a good movie if you've never seen it it's unfortunate that the only way to see it, as far as I know, is this kind of shitty quality version on that Max Go service. And in fact, on investigation, there is a DVD available for the the Hitcher, the 86 Hitcher, that uh, looks like it might be, eh, it looks like it's still in print. I'm not sure if that's going to have the widescreen. And also, why isn't there a Blu-ray? Oh, but there is a Blu-ray. Only in this case... It is a German Blu-ray and would have to be imported. And I don't know how the transfer is on that. It's just really unfortunate that this terrific uh, movie from the 80s has been given such short shrift. And I know that there is a remake out there of uh, The Hitcher starring Sean Bean. And you can probably get a fantastic quality version of that. And that's really unfortunate because uh, this, this movie ought to be celebrated it ought to have the best transfer uh, that you've ever seen. Just because the setting is so good, you know, those big desert landscapes, and you just want to see all of that in as good a format as you can, much less a movie that's, you know, th this good. Uh, Eric Red, the guy who wrote this, would go on to, uh, to, to write movies like uh, Body Parts. He wrote Near Dark, which feels very similar in terms of uh, setting in particular wrote uh, that movie 100 Feet with Famke Jansen um, and it directed that movie as well and then it, uh, Hitcher was directed by a guy named Robert Harmon who did uh, the horror movies They and uh, did a most known weirdly for a bunch of those Jesse Stone movies with Tom Selleck uh, and and directed a bunch of Blue Bloods television. Like apparently he and Tom Selleck are just big buddies, which fine, fine. That's the that, nothing wrong with that. But I mean, come on, can we please get uh, a great version of the Hitcher out there? I, I want that more than I want almost anything. Um, so anyway, I hope that I have impressed upon you the need, and and we march January sixth like on HBO films uh, who produced this movie to get us the version of the Hitcher that we deserve uh, and why it's not on HBO Max in a great look looking transfer is beyond me anyway I'm just I, I'm so angry I'm beside myself I get angry god damn it so you should absolutely watch the Hitcher if you've never seen it I have not spoiled anything for you that uh, would be a deterrent to your enjoyment of this film, even if you know how this thing ends. Like, oh, the good guy wins. That happens. Fair Spoilers for that. But the journey and the the tension of this movie, I think is just so good. The cat and mouse between Rugger Hauer and C. Thomas Howell is just the best. So uh, that is it for today, the 22nd of October, and a look at the 1986 banger, The Hitcher. Uh, if you have seen The Hitcher as well, and, and more importantly, if you know where I can get my hands on a great copy of it, let me know. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this movie. If you haven't seen it, you should. Get back to me and let me know what you think. If you have seen it, then feel free 
uh, to to drop me a line just to say, you know what, Bo, you're right. The Hitcher does rock. That is one of the best horror movies that nobody ever seems to talk about. So uh, that is it for today's twenty uh, second of 31 days of Halloween. Um, Oh man, what a good one. I love this movie so much. So anyway, enjoy the rest of your day out there. Do good work. Be spooky. We've only got a few days left to do that. So be as spooky as you can while still uh, within the bounds of the law. And we will see you right back here tomorrow for the 23rd of 31 movies that we're going to talk about in this 31 days of Halloween celebration. We'll see you then.